So, the name of your first band uh, was Fujis. Fujis. Yeah. I'm pronouncing it well? Fujis. Yeah, like refugees. Because I think was obviously um, technically the first hip hop band that really has had refugees in its conscience. Uh, so, how, how people began responding to that identity? You were already a hip hop artist that called the band with a lot of intentions of you wanted to be giving light to the refugees. Yeah, so um, I know uh, Lauren is listening, Mrs. Hill and Prize, my other two band members of the Fugees. So I want to make sure they're listening. So I want to make sure that I break that, that history. I, I want to break the history straight. So before the Fugees, we were called rap translators. The reason why we was called rap translators was because I wanted to set up a group where we can translate. This is before Rosetta Stone. They call us the rap translators, and let me show you why. You ready? We the rap translators, we flip the language. I could go from English to the Spanish, like, Mira, amiga, buenos dias, señorita. Como esta usted y su familia? Estoy en bien en el micrófono. Espero que todos estén bien como yo. We're the rap translators. Y'all still not convinced? Y'all might get convinced when I flip it in French. Listen. Quand je marche de la valeur de l'amour, je ne crains aucun mal quand tu es avec moi. Quand je fais l'amour, on m'appelle Romeo. C'est l'histoire de ma vie, toujours. You are, listen, Americans say how you doing, German people say wie geht's. When I go to Germany, they say wie steht's. So we literally can rap in like 20 different languages. So that's why they call this, so that, that was the, so. Yo, and this, dude, this is like before Rosetta Stone, right? Before the, the translation. So we've always been aliens in our own kind. Now, the, the group went from rap translators to Fuji's because at the end of the day, two members of the group were Haitian, of, of Haitian descent. You have myself and you have Praz, and then you have Mrs. Hill, who naturally, ever since she's been 13, just a natural activist. And what we wanted to do was we had to create a voice for those that didn't have a voice, right? And what we wanted to do in hip hop, what you do is you take something that people put a stigma on, and they make it look so ugly and so negative and so ill. And we take the word and we make it fly. Fly translation, we make it a beautiful thing. So the message of the Fujis and the refugees, we wanted refugees all around the world to know when you hear this music, I don't care if you're in the bottom of a hut, you're getting on a boat, you know, you're in the club, wherever you at, you're a descendant. We wanted you to feel that your voice was heard. And that's how the group got the name. The, the group was named Refugees, but there was a rock band called Refugees, so we couldn't call ourselves Refugees. <laughs> so then we made it short and called ourselves Fugees. Fugees. Yeah, yeah, Fugees. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That's a good one. This episode of Longer Tables is sponsored by State Farm. When you get a new car or a new home, the first thing you might find yourself saying is, I cannot believe it, or this is incredible. But what you really want to say is the one thing that can get you the help you need. Like a good neighbor, a State Farm is there. A State Farm is there with the coverage you need for your car your home, and even boats, motorcycles, RVs, and other things that matter to you. With a State Farm agent, you know someone is there to help you choose the coverage you need. With so many coverage options, it feels good knowing you can find what works best for you and your needs. And when you need ways to get help, a State Farm gives you options there too. Whether it is in person, or on the phone with your local agent, or on statefarm.com, or on their award-winning app, a State Farm lets you do things your way. So when you need help protecting the things that matter most, remember to say, like a good neighbor, a State Farm is there. So you, you've been making music for, for decades. Uh, how do you stay inspired? How? For example, whatever was your later single, 
Where, where, where the inspiration really comes from? What is your creative process for it? Yeah. So by the time I was 14, I was playing 13 different instruments. So um, then by the time I was 17, I was a jazz major competing throughout all of America. So I came up like a ghetto prodigy in the community. And my true gift is composing, like Quincy Jones. That was my idol. So I wanted to be like Quincy Jones. Now, I never wanted to be famous, right? So in school, I hated like the curriculum. I like two curriculums. I like social studies, anything with politics I like, and anything with music I like, everything else I didn't like. So in that process, I said, man, I got to get a job in America. And one day, I was smoked out. You know, I was smoking a little ganja. And so I'm, I'm a hippie. So, and, and be, peep this, I'm barely 18, right? I'm 17 something. And then I see a commercial on the TV comes in and it's a dog with a patch on his eye doing a Budweiser commercial. And I said, what the fuck? If, if a dog could be famous in America, There's no way I ain't going to be famous. The dog was, I think it was called Spud McKenzie, and it was the Budweiser commercial. So I said, I said, in order for me to be famous, I have to make people famous. So I did not, I wanted to be on the side of Quincy Jones. So that's why I'm on the side of the composer. So I stayed inspired by the world. I'm never inspired by one thing. I'm inspired by Brazil, Africa, India, Nepal. So the inspiration for me comes from the human. So that's why it's endless.